Hi, Tessa. Oh. Hi. How are you doing? Um, well, I took, I did get a COVID test today. So hopefully um, by Monday, I'll have the results. And, know awesome. <laughs> and you'll probably feel wonderful before then. I sure hope so. I, I like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a cold, um, but um, better safe <laughs> in this than sorry in this case. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm ready to be host. Um, for, okay. Um, you can get on with your evening. <laughs> well, I'm gonna come back for the. Um, oh, for the 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 culvert, of course. Yeah, hopefully it's not too long. So we still, we don't, you're still waiting to get uh, your computer and an email address, right? From Shootsbury? Email address? You mean specifically to me as a person? Well, right now you're logged in as Levert Concom. Oh, that's just because of the, um, I can rename myself. That's the, it must have been just the, um, I'm using the Leverett Conservation Commission e, uh, computer because my personal computer, which I have been using, um, is on the fritz. Um, so I'll just. Okay, so that puts the pressure on us to get you equipped sooner than later, and we're working on it. I know you are. No, I, I'm hoping that it just needs, an, my computer just needs a new battery. Um, Oh, that would be great. Right. So that's the first thing I'm going to try. So I'm going to make Tessa the host. There you go. Okay. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll open the participants so that I can see when people are asking to come in. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm going to disappear for a while, but I'll be back. Yeah, I could have, whoops, I have the agenda open so that I could, um, so it's scheduled. You might already know this. Um, I think Linda said 735. Yes. Yep. Perfect. Okay. See ya. <laughs> See you then. Hi, Tessa. Hi, Becky. Becky is not here. She's here, but not here. She had to host it because there was another meeting that was happening at this time. Oh. Um, and she's going to come back for the sawmill culvert. Oh, great. Um, have you forwarded um, my letters to all the other commissioners? Yes, I believe I did that when it when you first sent it out. Yeah, but there was been a couple more, and I just didn't know if everybody's gotten everything. Um, I don't know if I sent out the last one that you'd sent to Becky to everybody. Yeah, could you? I'm, I'm just assuming, you know, just for since it's going to be discussed later, could you just forward it to everybody? Um, in a moment. Uh, yeah, I was just going to try and get into EDUP and check on the that. But um, and unfortunately, with EDUP, I can't have anything else open. It's really annoying. Like that. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Hi, Penny. Hi, Penny. Hi, Becky. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, she ducked out. She's come back. Oh, in for the it's just her name up there. Yes, because <laughs> there's another meeting going on. 
Okay, and how are you feeling, Tessa? You know, I made some tea <laughs> uh, and I did get a COVID test. So I'll find out hopefully by Monday. Oh dear. Yeah. Good. Uh, so um, yes, well, I, my husband just finally got his results this afternoon. It took him three days after taking his test. It seems mixed. Some people it's, get it within like the 24 hours. I know, I know, it's, it does seem so random. Is he okay? Anyway, he finally took his mask off when he's home, so that's good. <laughs> Is he okay? He's fine. You know, he, he just took a, a trip to a high incident state for work and uh, he and all of his staff who went got tests as a precaution. And they're all fine. Yeah, and for me, I have cold symptoms. I just wanted to be careful. So was it fairly straightforward to get a test uh, approved? I, I took your recommendation from um, and went to the free uh, outdoor uh, venue at Holyoke Community College. Oh, OK. Um, I got tested last week. Were you I feeling ill? I was, it was uh, probably an allergy thing going on because I was coughing for um, a couple of days pretty badly. Mm -hmm. um, but I was very ill last spring and got tested. And um, that wasn't fun. That yeah. was back when they were like, you know, sticking the things down your- Down to your esophagus. <laughs> right, your, your, basically yeah. wire yeah. brushing your brain. Yeah. Now it's just a little nose thing. Um, I yeah. got tested at the Med Express Clinic in Hadley. Yeah, I've heard that that's a pretty good place to go to as well. It, I called at eight o'clock in the morning. They put me on a Zoom thing for five minutes and then I just uh, showed up and got the test. So did you have to be symptomatic to get a test there? Yes. Yes. I probably, if I had wanted to get tested and pay for it, but I might insurance covered it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think Steve, because his was travel, has to pay for, for his test. Oh gosh. Well, I'm sitting at my dining room table. I have plans spread out from one end to the other. <laughs> Yeah. So while we're just waiting for things to get started, um, we did not track down Mr. Brooks at his property and couldn't figure out what tree was the questionable okay. tree. So uh, we waited till a little after five, but there was no one there. There wasn't a tree flagged and there wasn't a tree that seemed uh, particularly ominous unless it was on his other property. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, well, try and get in touch with him. And also, I did try to go to town hall and pick, see if the other ANRAD material had arrived, but I went before the site visits and after the site visits, and I couldn't. No one came and, to the door? And no one came to the door when I rang the bell. So I don't know what the answer to that is. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, I guess Becky had mentioned that uh, Grace was at a chiro had a chiropractic appointment for part of the day. Okay. Um, so I don't know, but sometimes someone else. Well, I know there was a light on and a door open, but no brave soul came down and opened the door for me. Yeah, I know not everybody, I had heard that not everybody opened the door. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's true. <laughs> yeah, that's frustrating though. Oops. Okay, so we just need Liam and then we can open.
And are you going to need Liam's help in screen sharing things tonight or do you think you're okay? If if Liam was okay uh, with sharing, if the if plans need to be shared, mm -hmm. but in terms of the paperwork, I'll screen share the paperwork. Okay. So Miriam, you were on the site visit for the Capelli septic system, right? Uh, which address was that? That's the one on January Hills Road. Yep. Yeah, okay. she was there. Okay, I'm just trying to keep track of where things stand with what you can participate in. And um, right. so that's good. Penny, am I, I correct? Can I, am I correct that I cannot deliberate on the ANRADS because I wasn't here for all the public hearings? I need to ask Mark Stimson that. Um, I, I thought that was the case. I know Maria is, uh, Furstenberg is, uh, showing up as being present for our meeting. And my understanding is those are all going to be re-noticed um, oh, okay. and May I? posted. And so I don't know how that works, um, whether okay. because they're being reposted, they uh, you have the ability to weigh in on things or not. I think they pro I probably will be if it's not a continuation of the original ANRAD. It, it is well, it is it is a continuation but there was oh. a, it's been such a long delay and there was an error in the original posting oh. and trc made the decision not to repost until we were ready to actually do something which i think was smart um can i just interject i have yeah. a an email from liam yeah he is having trouble he says Anyone else getting, quote, the host has another meeting in progress? I'm thinking that he's using the old link. I just sent him an email from, so I said I had to send out the new link today because I just got it. Right. I will tell him to, to look for the new link. Oh, yeah, I just sent him an email with it again. So hopefully. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open our meeting um, since it is 7.03 and um, let's see. Um, so I'm going to start by welcoming uh, Miriam officially to the commission. I think we were going to do that the last time we had a regularly scheduled meeting um, when uh, many trees down and powers, power being out um, caused that one to be canceled. So happy to have you, Miriam. Thanks. Thank you. Thank for joining. you. And I'll also announce this isn't on the agenda, but uh, just for the record, we heard from Russ Missoula today that he ha has stepped down effective today. So um, we do have one additional opening and we will contact Mary David to see if she is still interested in joining the commission. Okay, um, I guess we should consider the minutes. Um, perhaps we should wait for uh, just another minute to see if, oh, there's Liam. Hi, Liam. Hello. Yay. <laughs> So I looked up both sets of minutes and they both looked good to me, except for there was a few minor corrections to the October 16th meeting, none to do with the content. It just, um, the title said agenda instead of minutes. Yep. And uh, yep. it said that Jake's called the meeting to order at 9.01 PM rather than AM. Yeah. So other than those, they looked great. Okay. That, that was the only two things I got too. Okay, and I had a couple of minor things on the 
other set of minutes. Let me just get that document back up again. Um, and uh, for the uh, Baker Road RDA that we considered that night, it says the commission will con conduct a pre-construction site visit, which will be mentioned in the determination letter. And I don't think this is a mistake, but I just wanted to check with Tessa that that did go out in the letter that was sent. Tessa, can you confirm that? Sorry, I was still muted. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so there's a cover letter that, um, that template that- right. Linda passed on to me mm -hmm. that I sent out. I just, I'm, I'm asking because I think the project has been completed and I don't think we've been invited for a pre-construction visit. Oh, okay. So um, could you check with Becky and just see um, whether in fact that happened? And then one other very minor thing for the top of the lake conservation area, I requested um, $500, not $5,000 from the commission. Oh, you could that's, just, a yeah, that's a big difference. Yep. <laughs> that's way more than we have. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing is for the uh, lot D18 issue uh, certificate of compliance topic. Uh, um, I think there's some confounding of two different projects in that um, set of the notes because it lists some conditions which are the Baker Road project um, okay. conditions. So if you could just remove those. I, th I think we, as I recall, we made a motion to issue a complete certificate of compliance based on the fact that everything had been um, completed as specified in the order of conditions. Okay. So, I think okay. those were the only catch. Did anyone else have any um, additions or corrections? Nope, not beyond what you have. Okay, so um, let's see. We, I will make a motion that we accept the minutes as amended per our conversation just now um, for both um, 924 and 1016. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, so um, I'll read a road call, roll call and we can vote. Um, Liam Cregan. Aye. Miriam Defont. I don't think I can vote on the minutes when I wasn't a member. Oh, but you were, okay. You can vote on the, one, the 1022 minutes. So That's a partial today. aye. <laughs> 1016. 1016, correct. And Jackson. Robin Harrington? Aye. Penny Jakes, aye. Okay, so um, do we want to quickly talk about um, geocaching on the Robert Frost Trail? Did I miss welcome to Miriam? You did. Okay. You, you can welcome her yourself. <laughs> well, welcome, Miriam. Thank you. And we have Brian Pattinger. Hello. Hi, uh, Brian. Line. Are you here to tell us about geocaching? Oh, sure. Um, I was actually looking to get permission to put some geocaches on some of the uh, Shootsbury Conservation land. Um, but geocaching is a um, it's a passive field game where people hide objects small objects. I think I included a picture of what I would be hiding. Um, and people use a GPS device to go or, or their smartphone to go out and look for the device. Once they find it, they signed the log sheet that's in it and put it back where they found it for, for others to find it. Um, and it's just a way to get people out to enjoy the land. And um, there's others that are on the Robert Frost Trail that have been placed there in previous years. 
in Shoot Fury as well as like an Amherst and Wendell. Um, mm -hmm. So um, the um, game requires us to get permission from the from the landowners to make sure that it's all right that, mm -hmm. that we place those. So that's what I'm here today. So to ask. can you be more specific about what properties where the where sure. the locations are? Uh, the the Robert Frost Trail um, c coming from Amherst, cutting through Shootsbury, and then going up towards Wendell. So uh, let me look at my map here really quick. I think I remember it. it was a fairly small. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very small area. section. Um, um, over by Pratt Corner, I believe. I think that's where the, the, your uh, your town and Amherst intersect. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's like five or six of them that I wanted to place just just to connect the 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 Amherst and the Wendell area. I mean the Montague area because I have ones out there also. Um, so I would also maintain them should something happen, um, or when I'm done when I'm done or others are done with them, go out and retrieve them. Um, mm -hmm. They're placed in areas where it wouldn't uh, require folks to go too far off the trail. So uh, in terms of natural habitat and, uh, and um, uh, ground um, plants and things like that, um, we try to put them where they won't be disturbed or where somebody would also not get hurt. You know, I'm not going to put them on a, on a ledge where somebody might fall off a ledge or something like that. Most times they're hanging behind a backside of a tree or something like that. And so, Brian, do you know which which section in Shootsbury you're thinking of putting them? Yeah, let me give you a second here to look up on on um, on my other tablet here, where the proposed area is. Bear with me just a second. I thought I had it with me already. I'm sorry, I'm not more prepared for this. Let me see here. Okay, they would be um, Coming off of Pratt Corner, going north mm -hmm. um, on the Robert Frost Trail. So they're they're okay. they're all on the marked Robert Frost Trail. So if you okay. from, from Pratt Corner going north up to Montague. So I think I have how many how many did I want to put out? Uh, one, two, three. Uh, I think just three or four. And the last one would be. Uh, it's, just, it's just showing on my map, just the trail that's going north. Um, okay, so from Pratt Corner Road in north? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I I think that um, at least that section between Pratt Corner Road and the Atkins Reservoir is private land, and it's, um, I know the landowner a little bit. I don't know if you know, it's, his name's Walter, or Kevin Weir. Oh, no. The Vanfield okay. Weir parcel. So I, th I think that you might be better off reaching out to the landowner, and I, I could... If you could potentially send me the pins of where you want to put the geocaches, sure, sure. I could let you know who okay. to reach out to. Excellent. All right. Cool. Um, so can someone send me your email so I can do that? Um, yeah, I can make sure you do get connected. Okay. Excellent. All right, folks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Liam, how do you spell that Kevin's last name? W E I R. And he's actually a former Conservation Commission member. So he, well, he's probably not, he might be in the Rolodex. I have his email as well. But if you have it, Liam, you can share that with, um, with Tessa. Okay. Yeah, I can connect. Yeah, I just I guess I would just need to see where um, Brian actually wants to put them and then we can figure it out from there. Yeah, if you look at a map of where the Robert Frost Trail goes, it's really just a tiny little section that goes through a corner of uh, Shootsbury. So it yeah. can only be a few places. I think it's mostly Kevin Weir's property.
No, but that's a good idea to make sure the um, property owner is on board. Um, so at, at 7.15, we should open the public meeting for the uh, the public meeting for the RDA at 29 January Hills Road. Is anyone here to represent? Oh, I see Alan Weiss. Alan, can, uh, Tessa, can you unmute Alan? And, or Alan, can you unmute yourself? Unmute, I am unmuted. Okay, so can you give us a quick overview of the project, yeah, please? Yeah, absolutely. Greetings to everyone, hope you're all well. Um, we have a routine septic system repair here at 29 January Hills Road. Um, we are not asking for any variances. We are not um, with any, all we're simply doing is working in the buffer zone, greater than 50 feet, but less than hundred feet. I'm hemmed in if you can see the plan, which I can show you as well right here. I am hemmed in by the property line and the well 100 foot radius here. So. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that explains the limitation as to why I have to be in the buffer. Siltation control is noted on the plan. Um, I don't see any major issues here. Um, they're, they're, they're really, it, it'll be uh, obviously uh, after the siltation control will remain until, you know, uh, things are seeded and grown back and stabilized. Um, more than happy to talk about it, but that's, that's the gist of it. Questions, commission members? No, the site visit was extremely um, helpful and useful. And, and, and I agree, Alan, that it's a very straightforward project. I mean, there's no um, slope issues, um, you know, nothing of concern. So, I think your um, the plan you gave us seems reasonable, and uh, I'm satisfied with that. So I could share my screen and pull up the conditions that uh, Robin had drafted, if that would be helpful at this point. Okay. Well, we should probably close the hearing before we talk about the conditions. Okay. So if, if, if no one has any additional uh, uh, questions or feels the need for any additional information, we'll, we can close the public meeting. I, I just want to add that you'll see that right on the plan, I do note um, some conditions that I put on that are more, uh, that are rather standard in terms of 72 hour notice to you and so forth about the silt fence being up and maintenance of the silt fence during construction and until there's regrowth and normal stuff, but- It's probably, uh, the, same, it's probably the same conditions that we came up with. That's fine, <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, okay. So did anyone have further questions or concerns? Then um, yep. could I have a motion to close the public meeting? Yeah, sure. I move that we close the public meeting for 29 January Hills Road at 9 p.m. Okay, so we'll do a roll call again. Um, all in favor, um, please vote. Uh, Liam Cregan? Aye. Miriam DeFont? Aye. Robin Harrington? Aye. Penny Jakes? Aye. So um, you can share the, the conditions, but you know, the bottom line is I think we have pretty much the same stuff that, um, right. that uh, Alan would have suggested. And I don't know if any other commissioners would like to add anything to that. Did you have a chance to look at Robin's conditions or draft? I did and um, I felt like they covered for the most part, the, the majority of the concerns we might have considering it's a pretty standard project. Is there anything you think uh, we should add? Nope. Okay. Um, actually, I had one, which yeah. was if we're gonna ask them to tarp um, any debris, do we also want them to tarp any um, of their materials that they're bringing on site for the construction, like 
So maybe it can just be changed to um, any unconsolidated materials that are part of this project. That sounds good. Unconsolidated, what was the word? Material. Materials. So that could be excavated material. What? That could be, you know, any, anything that was either taken out of the ground or is there to be added to the um, project. I just want to add, it's, it's more likely than not that they can actually stockpile or put anything outside the 100 foot buffer in this situation. Okay, well, that's good to know. So maybe the condition could say if it's not piled within the buffer zone, it will be tarped. Tessa, are you making these changes? Yes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Any other changes? No, nope, I think, um, you know, it's a very straightforward project. Okay, thank you. When you're through, can I ask one question before you start the next hearing? Yep. So um, I have two or three different projects coming your way, um, mostly around Lake Whiteola, and I just wanted to know your uh, dates coming up. Um, well, <coughs> starting in November, we our schedule moves to one meeting a month. So it's okay. the second Tuesday of the month. Okay. I mean, Thursday, second Thursday of the month. November 12th, and then it's December 10th. Perfect. These are not rushed. They're obviously for next season, and that's why I've held off on them, frankly, too, because I'm swamped. Um, is December, what was that? 10th. 10th. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everyone. Okay. You too. Yeah. Um, so while we're waiting for 7.30, why don't we move through a couple more things. Um, Southbrook Conservation Area, no movement. Top of the Lake Conservation Area, I may have so found someone to install a fence. I hope to meet with him this weekend. Um, I don't know, do, uh, do we have time, Tessa, to talk about the budget and um, the capital budget request? Yeah, Linda didn't seem to think it would be too long. Um, so the requests have come in, uh, the one, the regular budget request is supposedly due at the end of October. And then the other, uh, the capital budget one is requests are due in November. Um, Linda said that with Conservation Commission, because of the small size, the timeline isn't as set, set in stone. Right. Can you just, since, since we have new members, can you just share what our budget has been in other years? Um, I'm not sure if I have that right on my fingertips. Um, oh. I know. I know we um, annually request a very small sum from the town's uh, general budget. I think it's well under a thousand or around a thousand dollars. Yeah, that sounds familiar to what Linda told me. And then Tessa's salary comes out of a different line. Um, and then our other funds you've probably seen on our um, financial uh, information before, we also have uh, a, a chunk of money from filing fees, both from uh, 
Wetland Protection Act fees and local bylaw fees. And then we have some, a fairly good amount of money in a fund that is a, a land trust fund that can only be used for purchasing conservation land. How much is in that one? I can't remember. Like 80, it's like 80K. Yeah, I was gonna say wow. somewhere between 60 and $80,000. And we use that very infrequently. The most recent use was to help the state buy a small piece of land next to a critical um, uh, stream on the S curves that was um, potentially going to be developed for a house lot. And it abuts the, um, what is it? The Paul Jones working forest uh, property. And it's actually a very good site. If you have a chance to go there, there's a lot of is, am I breaking up on your end too? My, my audio on my end is very strange. Anyway, this piece of property has one of the oldest mill sites in town and um, it's maybe a hundred yards from the road. So it's a very, it's kind of a hard walk, but it's very short. Someday we'll do a field trip there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I don't know if you want to wait and deal with our budget request at our next meeting, Tessa, when you can actually provide hard numbers to us. I don't think we usually make a capital request. That was what Linda, yeah, mentioned, that there wasn't generally a capital request. So our small request covers things like printer ink, occasionally a new printer or a new piece of office equipment, paper supplies, photocopying, things like that. Um, we don't have a lot of substantial expenses. Um, So we've got two minutes. Does anyone have a topic? Um, I, I don't, there's not enough time for us to talk about it, but I know that we have on the agenda the wetlands bylaw. Mm -hmm. And um, I read through it and I have a bunch of questions and comments. So um, hoping that, you know, sometime in the near future, we can have enough time to have a conversation about it. Yeah, that would be great. And I know Liam and Robin have drafted a, a revision of the bylaw. Have you seen that or just that's the one? What I'm, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Okay. No, that is a, a, a topic to be continued as, th as soon as things settle down a little bit in our <laughs> schedule. When was yeah, that? <laughs> so, um, so we're gonna do some quick talking here at 7.30. Um, we have uh, two public hearings to quickly continue and then we have the Sawmill River project at 7.35. And are people here from the Sawmill River? Uh, I see uh, This here. Yeah, this is Matt Skiewicz from Niche Engineering. Okay, so, um, okay, at 7.30 we will, uh, talk about the public hearing for the ANRAD at on um, Montague Carver. And Maria, I know you're on here. Um, I don't know if you have anything you quickly want to say about that when we open that, but you can see we've got, well, I don't know if you've got our agenda, but we've got um, a lot of quick transitions between public meetings here. Okay, I, I can talk whenever you want me to talk, I'm here. <laughs> okay. So I'm thinking, as I recall, you were comfortable with continuing um, the Montague Carver project for a while because there's no movement on that one yet, correct? Right. I. 
owe you and Emily some documents so that right. the new piece can um, be right. looked. And at. that still we that still hasn't been presented to us. No, that's that's on my list of things to give you, and it's kind of like jumped around and where it is on my list because okay. of um, what the client has told us about like what order they want to do the other permitting and things. And so I I apologize that that hasn't been super transparent because honestly, it's been kind of going back and forth over the last couple of months, what order they really think they're doing things in. Oh my goodness, that must be challenging on your end. Uh, a little bit. So I, I understand that you've been waiting for a little while on me. And then, okay, well, let's quickly open the 7.30 um, uh, continuation of the public hearing for ANRAD at ZD37. Montague Carver Road, and we will continue, continue this to a future date. At this point, it looks like it will be um, January. Um, or further, Maria, what do you think? Um, I, I think January is possible. I, I had a question about that, actually. I'm assuming that because of the very first hearing, you said that you wanted everything peer reviewed, that you don't necessarily need a meeting to approve Emily's change order to keep going? Not for that one. Okay, uh, for, the new, for the new ones, it, I feel like it's a little more complicated. Right, I just wanted to check on that one. If, if that's the case, then January is totally fine. Um, but you know, we do need to get your paperwork and she does need to give us a proposal and we do need to get money in escrow before we can ask her to do any work. I, I understand. Yeah. So we can, we can set, set this for January and unless there's another one you, you would prefer to set in January. <laughs> um, no, our, our goal is to to stay on November for the Pratt East. Um, and I we had talked about moving Pratt West, which was originally tonight to December. Right. Okay. So putting Montague in January is fine. Okay, so then I um, move that we um, continue the ANRAD at ZD37 to our January, uh, help me Four, here, Tessa. 14. 14th meeting at 8 p.m. I second that. Um, and you're okay with that, Maria? Yes, thank you. Okay. So um, I'll take a roll call. Um, all in favor, um, state your vote. Uh, start with Liam. Aye. Uh, Miriam, I'm... I don't think you can weigh in on this one. So. We'll have to figure out how that's going to work. Um, Robin? Aye. And uh, Jake's aye. Okay, so then we're going to open the public meeting for uh, the continuation for the AMRAD at CW6 Pratt Corner Road West. And um, we are looking to reschedule that for our December meeting. Right, Maria? 12.10 at 8 p.m.? Yes, that's Pratt West. Um, so um, can someone make a motion? Sure, I make a motion that we continue the ANRAD uh, ZW6 public hearing to December 10th at 8 p.m. I second. Okay, all in favor? Um, Cregan? Aye. Harrington? Aye. Jake's aye. Okay, so we have one minute to um, before we can reopen the public hearing for what I've been calling the Sawmill River culvert, but I think the plans actually call it the Locks Road culvert. So. Did you have a time for the January 14th? Would that also be 8, 8 p.m.? 8 p.m., the... yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Oh. 
So I need just a minute to get organized to discuss the Sawmill River project. Okay, so um, let's open the continue, continued uh, public hearing for culvert, the Lux Pond culvert. And um, I know Matt is here. I, Matt, I don't know if you have any new information for us that you'd like to start with. Um, I don't believe so. I think we, we sent everything that was requested um, at the past hearing. Um, so I don't think there's anything new to present, but I do want to thank you very much for um, being able to start the order of conditions or drafting that, you know, in preparation for this meeting. That's um, greatly appreciated, right. uh, at least on our part. And I'm, I'm sure Becky would appreciate that as well. Yeah. Well, I can't promise that we're going to get them issued tonight. Um, uh, hi, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hi. everyone. Um, I have a bunch of just sort of general questions and minor questions that I'm hoping we can work through. And I think other commissioners may also have some questions. Um, sure. So my first question is we're, we're basing this order on the information presented in a plan that's uh, listed as 20, the 25% submittal plan. Does that mean things are likely to change between now and 100%? And no. Um, compensate for that in an order of conditions. Um, in, in order of conditions, you can, we, well, we're planning on submitting um, our 100% final plans that we get stamped by MassDOT. MassDOT has to do what's called the Chapter 85 review um, mm -hmm. prior to us um, being able to build this. So we will submit those uh, MassDOT approved Chapter 85 review plans to you. Um, and typically how we do that in the order of conditions is again, similar to what we did for the uh, water control plans is, is you would include a condition to you know, request that we submit all 100% plans, but in terms of anything changing, um, no, this is this is probably the biggest milestone um, that we're waiting for in order to finalize the layout and, and culvert design. The only thing that will be added after this are more detailed um, sections. So the reinforcement that goes into the culvert, the, the reinforcement that goes into the walls, um, details like that, how, how it's all kind of put together and, and some of the finer details. So that's what's, that's what's added after the 25%. But once we, uh, we typically do these, these types of things, um, uh, NOIs, um, Army Corps permits at the 25% phase, because mm -hmm. um, once they get reviewed and done, then generally the, the project itself doesn't, doesn't change after that. Okay. And if there are any changes in the very, very small chance that there are, we will, you know, we will share those as soon as we become aware of them or those ch plan changes are made. But we, we certainly, on a plan like a uh, uh, project like this, it's pretty straightforward. We don't anticipate any, any changes. Okay. So can you refresh my memory on how you would word this in a condition? Um, I guess um, I would say something like, I'm trying to find what we, we said. It would, it would be similar to the wording that we sent regarding the um, water control plan in uh, something like the, the um, yeah, the, the commission requests or will require um, the, I would, I would even call it the mass dot approved chapter 85 um, reviewed and it's kind of wordy, but um, something along those lines. Um, and those will be the final plans that we submit. So uh, I would, yeah, something like that, you know, we, we will require finalized plans, stamped finalized plans approved by MassDOT prior to um, the beginning of construction or prior to the um, site visit, you know, uh, 
pre-construction site visit or pre-construction coordination meeting. Yes, yeah, so I hope you're getting this. I'm trying to write this down as well. Yeah, sorry, that wasn't very clear, concise, but yeah, I hope thinking, you get yeah. the general, general gist of it. Okay. So then if we reference um, the 25% submittal plan and we reference the additional plans that you gave us on the, that are dated 21 September, um, we should have a pretty clear idea of how things are going to be done. I would say, yeah, that's a very, very clear um, approach. I, I, yeah, I really don't anticipate anything to change. Okay. We essentially the, the only things that change at this point are from um, CONCOM hearings or Army Corps of Engineer um, permits. Okay. Um, so one thing I don't think we had talked about in depth is um, my, it, it seems like there will have to be some excavation done to install the the culvert. So how will equipment get down there without um, proceeding through the resource area? Uh, we don't, we anticipate all excavation should be done from the roadway embankment. I, I, so you can reach um, down that far? Yes, yep. Okay. Or they will, they will excavate down to the roadway um, and provide access there. I don't, they, they will not be going beyond the, the bounds of our, um, the limit of uh, work, the limit of work or the erosion control with, with heavy equipment. Okay. I'm pausing here because I'm scribbling sure. down notes as I uh, write. And then typically what happens on the work site in a day when there's heavy rain? Um, that's really up to the contractor and how they, they do things, but they, they should not be, every slope that they excavate, every excavation that they do should be um, stabilized in the event of heavy rain. They shouldn't be doing anything at a, you know, more than a two to one slope of excavation. So um, uh, yeah, no, heavy rain shouldn't, and again, that's all mass DOT requirements and they have all the standards and, and OSHA does as well about okay. dictating what, what can can't be done by a contractor. Um, so that's all, um, those regulations are all standard for any, standard. any types of okay. projects, yeah. Okay. And then, um, as I recall, but I just wanted to confirm this, you took out the 25 square foot uh, area of wetland that was going to be altered. So we don't need to deal with that anymore? Correct. Initially, we, we put that in to be a little conservative because um, you know, we thought you know, maybe excavation in that area, but having gone back to the site and looking at it, um, we feel comfortable. We added a note saying that that wall will be taken down with, with hand excavation uh, by the contractor. So they won't be using heavy equipment there. They won't be digging in there. So we, it won't be impacting the BVW that we initially, you know, included in the NOI. Okay. And um, uh, do other people have question as I look through all my notes here? Um, I had a couple questions looking at, um, and I've got these printed out they're tiny, so I'm hoping I've got them. This is the 921 um, maps sheets, and I'm looking at uh, maybe S, maybe that's an S3, um, uh, and a, sure, and, and maybe a, an S2. So one question I had was in the elevations on S2. Um, yep. One you've got modeled with the stream bed that you're going to be creating with substrate and the other, and you, I don't see that modeling. And I'm just wondering if there was a reason for that. Um, so on the, on the east elevation is the inlet that we showed yeah. um, the, um, the 
uh, recently uh, in these revised plans, we added what was called a, a Thalweg uh, from mm -hmm. the um, DEP uh, comments. And uh, that was essentially, we added the, the, the stone on the sides and then the slight depression in the middle to concentrate water during right. low flow to there. Uh, but on the exterior side, the, the outlet side, the west elevation, um, that's going to be a riprap blanket in front um, at roughly the elevation of the stream bed. So what we're showing there is, is the the riprap just past the um, outlet. So um, it, it, we could have showed, like we said, that beyond, but it, it just came a little bit too crowded and a little bit too. Um, so so what you're seeing there is, is really the, that riprap riprap blanket beyond the the outlet, just to show the condition of what the the bottom of the stream bed will look like beyond the outlet. Okay. And traditionally, yeah. in a riprap blanket like that, you don't um, continue the thalweg through there. Um, I guess we could, uh, typically, I, we'll, I, I'm we'll, just we'll, asking we'll, for information. Yeah, that really know. sure. Um, we, in that area, it's, it's, it's a basin. Um, we're not, we're not really excavating any of the material there. We're, we're laying the riprap on the existing, what has already been scoured. So we're refilling, um, that area, the, the scoured area, the eroded area with, with, uh, you know, thin layer of riprap to, you know, build that back up again, but also stabilize the slope and stabilize the stream bed. So um, that thalwag will will drain into a basin. Essentially, there's right now it's a large um, uh, uh, kind of stilling basin um, that that was caused by you know fast fast moving water through the culvert that drops out at the end there. So um, it it isn't it isn't a um, a continuous stream bed, I guess you could say it, it, it does fall off into that, you know, that bowl, that basin at the outlet, which is going to be filled with riprap, but essentially going to keep that same shape. Um, so, and the other thing is the riprap is, is very large. I mean, the thaw wag is, you know, at, at low flow might only be, you know, 12 to 24 inches wide, which you probably can't get that precision with um, dump riprap. And you'd have to you'd have to fill up the the basin quite a bit to to keep that continuous. I would say. Okay. So yeah, you can kind of see on on S one the the biggest plan that shows um, the outlet that that whole riprap area that area you're filling in is is kind of de a depression in the stream bed. It, it's caused by like I said the fast moving river the. Um, stream through the culvert that kind of falls out and, and stills there and, and sediment kind of falls out. So it kind of creates a, a small basin that is actually is, is actually good. It, it catches a lot of sediment. It, it kind of slows things down so we don't get a lot of erosion on the banks. So we're trying to, we're trying to maintain that. Um, thanks. The other question yep. I had is what is this going to be the source location for the uh, stream bed substrate material you're going to use? Uh, so we've actually talked about that a couple times at the um, public hearing. We don't have a, a source. Uh, we don't name a source. It'll be up to the contractor um, mm -hmm. to find a source, but we do have, we've taken samples of the stream bed material, uh, the existing stream bed material. So we have, you know, a sieve analysis, a breakdown of what that is. Uh, Mass DOT has a, a standard for uh, stream bed materials that the contractor will be required to uh, meet with whatever source material they find, but we can also, um, we've talked about, you know, working with the, the contractor to providing them with the stream bed um, material test, the uh, test samples that we received in order for them to be able to match it as, as closely as possible. But uh, we don't have, a, it's really whatever, typically source materials like this have to come from a Mass DOT approved um, product list or materials list. Um, so we'll, we'll require the contractor to, to choose from that and they'll be able to source it from wherever they're able to, you know, meet that, that requirement. Thanks, sorry for the hiccup. No, <laughs> and are we Are we able to specify that the stone needs to be native river stone or is that um, not something we're able to do? Um, that's a good question. I can, I can look into it and, and, uh, and see what that mass DOT requirement is. I don't know if they call for native river stone. I think they may just call for um, uh, particle sizes and particle distribution and how well graded it is. Um, 
again, that's that's something we can do whatever we want. We can, you know, we can specify. You can you can ask us to specify whatever material, but the more specific we get about what we need, I I, I don't know if if native stream bed material is sourceable like that. If someone's able to produce it or gather that or or make it meet the mass DOT specifications, so it, to me that just sounds like something that would be difficult to find and difficult to source, which and would increase cost yeah so we certainly want to meet we'll specify what we do to meet you know the mass dot pre-approved stand you know materials that they use for every other culvert they design and build in the state but um I, i'm not sure i'm not sure if native stream stones are are part of that i think we talked briefly when we did the site visit about trying to um harvest well, you'll, you'll certainly take out the stones. Well, there aren't many stones in the actual rusty culvert, are there? There aren't many stones in the rusty culvert, but um, there is some material. Obviously, they'll be excavating. Um, so it, it, they're replacing the circular area with, with a, 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 a square. And mm -hmm. they also do need to excavate down another um, foot or so beyond the existing in order to, you know, compact the soil and, and prepare the, the mm -hmm. sub base. So again, I don't want to talk for the contractor. It really is up to them for their means and methods, but I would anticipate that they would excavate a good amount of existing stream bed material, the existing substrate, and they would stockpile that and then reuse that rather than finding it from somewhere else. Okay. You know, well, and having to source it and bring it in. So I, I again, I don't want to, I don't want to lead you in a direction that I yeah. can't guarantee, but yep. that's that's the way I would do it if I was the contractor. Okay. Anyone else have questions? Nope. I'm just quickly skimming through my notes here. That's... Okay, I think that has answered all my questions. Um, so Matt, as I said, we have a draft of an order of conditions. I think I'll incorporate some of what we talked about tonight in there. Um, and Tessa, can you remind the commission what you found out from Mark Stinson about um, whether we need to final everything, finalize everything in tonight's meeting or whether we can um, agree to issue this with uh, minor changes to what the draft states? Yes, yeah, so the question that Penny had that I asked Mark Stinson at DEP was whether the commission could agree on changes, but not have them written up tonight and, and whether the writing up of the changes discussed could happen outside of a public meeting. And uh, Mark Stinson said that as long as the, the changes were discussed and nothing, no like big changes were done if it was just like word tweaking then that could happen outside of a public meeting um but if it was any elaborate changes then that would have to be at another meeting and so can we incorporate minor changes that we discussed as part of the meeting tonight without continuing this to another meeting or would i we wouldn't continue the hearing i don't think i think um at least Personally, I'm prepared to close the meeting, the hearing tonight. Yeah, so I think, well, my understanding was if we have all the information we feel like we need to write the orders of conditions, then we should close the hearing. Right. 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 And then the question just becomes, uh, can I incorporate the changes we talked about tonight in the draft of the order that I shared with all of you by email, or do we 
need to approve this in the context of a public meeting. Mm. Mm. My understanding was that wasn't the case. Which was the um, that we would we could amend the order of conditions after we've closed the hearing. We can do that, but but I guess the question is, can we agree on them outside the context of a public meeting where you see the final conditions? I'm more than happy to make some the changes that we talked about tonight, um, but are uh, legally can we? issue those orders without all of us coming together and looking at them one more time and voting on them. And Tessa, you said that Mark said as long as there's not major changes from what Penny has drafted, then that's okay. It sounds like you have to address everything um, of what what it would be, but if there's certain like word, that if Penny changes the word wording, but I can't add any new text. There's a whole issue um, in your notes, Penny, about the dewatering plan. How are we going to address that? Um, let me look back at that. And also seating. Seems like there's some questions the, here. The dewatering is how will it be resolved if the commission is not happy with right, the plan? Right. right. That was um, just a general question. And that's really a question more for Becky um than than matt because at the time a contractor gives us the dewatering plan matt if i understand correctly you will have done your job and and uh won't be part of this process no we'll be part of the process we oh, are yeah. I, it's our part of our scope to be on through construction and administration so we'll we'll be removed we'll be reviewing everything that we've requested including the dewatering plan including uh the the contractor's schedule and and um uh se sequencing plan um and we'll be out there doing site visits and making sure it's constructed oh, okay. per our so we'll we'll be on we'll be reviewing that and we, we'd certainly be happy to consult with you if you had questions on the the contractor's dewatering plan. Okay, well, that's reassuring. Um, yep. Um, yeah, I, I read that condition, the number one in the dewatering plan, and I, I was just thinking, you know, we're going to have the pre construction meeting. We could just include work will not commence until approved by the, or until the dewatering plan is approved by the commission at the pre construction right. meeting. Yeah. So I'm thinking yeah. of that sort, I think, would really just clear that up. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Okay. And then, um, Matt, do you envision that there's a lot of seeding that will need to be done to stabilize banks at the end? How do you see that going? Um, there will be, there will definitely be some seeding. Uh, like I said, it's it's a rather steep slope, and we're we're doing our best to reduce the steepness and reduce the embankment, but. Um, there's going to be some excavation on either side of the embankment in order to facilitate the, you know, uh, construction of the, the culvert and the wing walls. So we're, we're going to put, you know, fill back that will need to be seated. So um, I think those are shown, uh, there may be details shown on our uh, highway plans in the original um, submittal that show um, how they plan to, to seed it. And if they're not, then they'll definitely be in the. I didn't. Uh, I'll have to look for that. I didn't see that. Um, that I, I don't know if it necessarily shows an extent of where they, where they will, but it, it will all. It will be again. It'll be inside of the limits of work, which is you know more or less defined by the um, uh, erosion right. controls. Right. Right. And do you typically put erosion control blankets over the seated areas on a steep slope like that, or do you recommend that? On a steep slope like that, yeah. There's usually um, like a hay, a hay blanket that they they would put down on, on top of seated seated yeah, that's areas. That's what I had been thinking in that case. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm sorry, I don't know this from the document, but do you know if they specify it any particular kind of seed? Um, I. I don't know if they specified a seed. Um, I'll specify a seed. <laughs> sure. Yeah. If there's um, typically, I mean, uh, what we do in our concom is just specify a New England wetland 
conservation mix. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. and I'm sure that's something that yeah. the we've dealt with and contractors dealt with. So yeah. I certainly have no exception to that. Okay. Okay, I think I'm all set. Um, Excellent. Yeah, Anna? were you? Yeah, I feel good. Me too. Okay, then I'm going to move that we close this public hearing. I right, second that. Okay. Um, all in favor, um, starting with Liam. Aye. Miriam, you can't vote on this one. Um, Robin Harrington. Aye. And Penny Jakes, aye. So Matt, thanks for being so um, helpful in sorting us, sorting all this out for us. Hey, thank you for, you know, <laughs> being here and doing what you do. Trying to read that great big document that you gave us. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. We, we just like to include everything. Yes, I want to second Penny's thank you. <laughs> you know, you're so, taking us out for the site visit there, and your information at these meetings has been super helpful. Great, great. That's what we're here for. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll be talking again at some point. So <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. And we will um, see how quickly we can get the orders out to you. I appreciate it. Again, yeah, I know. I understand. You know. You have other projects and a lot of a lot of work, and you know, it's it's mostly just that we don't meet again for two weeks, and if exactly, we, yeah, you know, that's the that's the dilemma. Right, right. So, no, I understand. So, I, and I certainly don't want to, you know, dictate how you perform, but I, I I agree with what Tesla said in our conservation commissions. We we generally approve um, order of conditions as noted. So we'll discuss. We'll go through bullet by bullet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, including what we want to add. And then as long as nothing new comes up or nothing new is added, um, it doesn't need to be reapproved. But again, right. I'm, I'm just saying that to help move things along, but I, I, I certainly respect any, any way you choose to do it. Okay, well, thanks for your time. I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Okay, so it's 8.02, we will... Um, Open the public hearing for ANRAD ZQ6 on Baker slash West Pelham Roads. And uh, perhaps, Maria, this is a good time for you to give us a little bit of an update on where things stand. Sure. Um, so you, you can continue this one to um, Just probably a with, whichever meeting yeah. you're, you're comfortable with. Um, essentially, during the peer review process, the number of wetlands at this site um, were just too much for what they had wanted to be able to do. So since they're so far through the process, they do want to formally get an ORAD, but they're not planning any future permitting at that site for now. So it's on the back burner for a while. Okay. And then, um, so we can continue that until February, our February meeting. Sure. Tessa, do you have a calendar in front of you? Working on it, one moment. Yeah, yeah, I know, too many, too many things to look at. <laughs> I think it would be the 11th. That's the second Tuesday in February. Thursday. Uh, yep. Thursday, yeah. Yep. So that looks like when it is. Okay, so February 11th at 8 p.m. And um, can you just give her a broader, us a broader overview of what where things stand and what to expect? Yes. <laughs> As best you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I don't want to go out of bounds of what I'm allowed to do because we did promise that we'd re-notice some stuff. Um, but generally speaking, I 
I mostly owe you and Emily documents so that she can give her her final go ahead to you to approve things. Uh, my conversations with her, everyone's happy with where the wetland flags are on all these sites. Mm -hmm. um, just a question of making sure that the plans have incorporated all of those changes and all other things that um, have been asked for. So, and those are moving along on schedule at this point? Yes, I had hoped to get you some things today before this meeting and I had some technical issues. So you're gonna get some emails from me tomorrow instead. <laughs> okay, yeah, I went to town hall to see if we had received any hard copy of anything today. And well, I don't even know, cause I couldn't get in. <laughs> Um, so, so actually, that's that's a question that I have for you. I'm assuming you had requested some hard copies, and I'm assuming that we should send them to the town hall unless you have a different place you'd like me to send them to. Um, that's certainly something that I can follow up with Tessa on later. And the town hall is where they should go, um, okay. and we just need to we just need to get them in plenty of time because, as you know, our town hall is still closed, and so. Um, it's not as easy to access things as it typically would be. Yes, and, and I'm going to send you a, a PDF of everything as well. Okay. Um, but I, I'm one of those people that really likes having a hard copy too. So I totally understand that part. <laughs> Especially for those complex maps, it's really hard to yeah. see the detail you need to see on a, on a computer screen. So that's where those things are. We do have the two new ANRADs that- And well, uh, just, let's just quickly finish up talking about the Carver Road because that's the one where you're adding an area to that. Where do things stand with that? Um, we have done all the field work on just compiling everything to send it to you and Emily so that she can write a change order to do additional review. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and once she sends that to us, we have to send you money and then um, we can go out and walk that new area. Okay, how hard do you think that's going to be this late in the growing season? I don't think that it's going to be that difficult. Um, I, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, uh, but when we did these original sites, we had a person involved that had less experience in Massachusetts than some of us thought they did. So uh, a big piece of what went wrong, why many of the changes that were made were made um, is because they were essentially following a different protocol than what you're supposed to follow in Massachusetts um, because the Army Corps methodology and the Massachusetts handbook differ slightly. And that difference can be a very big difference um, at sites like these. Mm -hmm. um, and that person has gone through a lot of training this summer, frankly, with both me and Emily. Um, I know some of you have been on site with me and Emily and I, I think with Greg as well. And um, I think that, that Greg and Emily and I are all very much on the same page about what should be included and what shouldn't. Um, the, the other person, I'm, I'm not going to, to say who that was, but you, you may have met that person too. <laughs> um, so I, I'm feeling much more confident about these. Uh, the Montague site, I actually personally had a, Greg and I are the ones that did the extensions on that site. So I'm, I'm feeling very comfortable with it. I, I know that Emily and I have been very much on the same page and the lines themselves were put in um, you know, much earlier in the season than last time. The other thing that happened last time is that they were delineated um, I think in at the beginning of November or something, the original it was October and into November. Right. right. It was and extremely late that the originals were done, whereas this time the originals were done at a much easier time of year to see things. So as long right. as Emily is okay with things, I I think we'll be all right. Maria, um, this is yeah. Miriam Defont. I had a question. 
Sure. Yeah. What about the new to new um, submissions and the delineations? What time of year did you do those delineations? Um, earlier this summer, they were done in July and August. I think I, I would have to open them up to tell you the exact dates, but they were done during the regular growing season, not super early and not super late. Um, and, and those projects, you know, we're, we're just submitting ANRADs for those now. So if if by some miracle they can get fit in before there's a ton of snow everywhere, that's great. But we we understand that, you know, at this point we're really subject to the weather and the existing conditions that are out there. Right. I would just like to throw in, I was the conservation commissioner that went to the Baker site um, with Emily and the other person. Um, and it was clear that when the original one had been done, it was like the previous October and there had been a drought. And so it was really, it looked very, very different when we were out there um, in the summer. So I can totally see how time of year can affect these things. Right, and there's a, a, a couple of nuances between the Army Corps and the Massachusetts delineation is uh, that Army Corps requires that you have all three parameters, um, vegetation, soils, and hydrology, whereas Massachusetts, um, their handbook is actually a two-parameter handbook. The soils parameter is actually within the hydrology parameter, so you can essentially have hydrology or soils and check that off. Whereas the Army Corps, if you don't have both, then it it counts as quote not wetland. So that that was another issue that happened um, pretty much at, at the Montague and the Baker sites, and particularly that that was the issue at those. Um, and also that you have a lot of eastern hemlock in yep. your town, um, and the that. Army the Army Corps of Engineers classifies that as a wetland plant, whereas the Massachusetts or as an upland plant and Massachusetts classifies it as a wetland plant. So that was the other major discrepancy that um, the, the other person didn't quite understand how to deal with that. Um, so that's all been addressed. Okay, thank you. So, so just, uh, I still don't know quite where the these two new sites are. I'm just curious. You said one is on Montague Road. Where in relation to the Montague slash Baker project? Sure. Um, do you do you want me to share my screen and just like show you on a map? I mean, this is really just a point of curiosity at this point. I'd love to see where they are. <laughs> sure. Let let me bring that up really quickly. Um, I have, I have three screens up instead of two so that I could share, so that I could show you my video um, because I thought it would be nice. Oh, okay. um, and it's kind of messing up what order my mouse goes through the screens. <laughs> so, um, Share screen, not this one. Hit share. Okay, um, can you all see my screen? Yes. All right, so what happened to Montague Road? I just had it. There it is. So this site here, um, this parcel is the, the Montague Carver Road site that we've been talking about, just so everyone can see where that is. Um, so if we go south on Montague and we actually go on to Leverett Road, the site that's near Montague is actually this parcel. Um, and the site itself is just this corner of it. 
mm-hmm. basically bounded by the streams to the mm-hmm. north. Um, and do you know the acreage for the two sites? Uh, this one that, that I just had highlighted is about 25 acres. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other one. There it is. The other one is also off Pratt Corner Road, so it's it's actually being referred to as Pratt South. We have yet another one of those. I'm really sorry, but that's what they're calling them. Um, so it's this parcel here, mm-hmm. and it covers probably about two thirds of this parcel um, on the side of it, um, and that's. I'm going to say it's about 90 acres. Um, Originally, I think we were looking at 80, but I I think that 90 is a more accurate number. And I I did give Emily those acreages just so that she had an idea of what was coming up. But that's where the the new ANRADs are located. Thank you. I've just been, um, I keep hearing they're coming and I've uh, wondered where they are. I... We, we just got the signatures this week. We sent them out several weeks ago for signatures and it took a while for, for them to send them back. I had really hoped to get them to you a lot sooner. Um, so that's, that's what's coming. Um, in, in addition to future things, um, we did have a call recently where the, the client went over their their next plans. I think I can sort of talk about it generally um, because it's it's really not relevant to the ANRADs themselves. Um, but they are, for the most part, able to design the sites to stay out of buffer zones and jurisdictional areas. So the, the Pratt East site um, that we'll talk about at the next meeting um, won't require any more Conservation Commission permitting the Pratt West site will. So that's why we we asked if we could talk about that ANRAD in December, because uh, we're anticipating that we have to do an NOI for that and that you'll be getting that um, early next year, probably in January or February with the timeline that they've given us. Um, Okay. And then Montague, I think, is also going to require an NOI, uh, but that one, you know, the I don't really know the full timeline on that because we're still trying to finish getting the wetland lines reviewed on that. Hmm. Okay. Well, helpful to know all of this. So um, thank you for for squeezing me in tonight. I know it wasn't no. on your schedule. That's okay. I mean, I, I think we've all been wondering what was going on and, uh, and frankly, a little perplexed that um, things, at least from what we had seen, ground to a halt in early summer. Um, so it's uh, helpful to know. No, I, I understand that, Mom. Sorry, I wasn't more communicative about it. It was <laughs> a little confusing trying to figure out what, what order everything should happen in. Um, we, we have a number of sites for this particular client, not all in your town. So mm-hmm. we feel like we've been doing lots of work on, on like the, this whole set of things, but I, I know that, that this particular subset hasn't moved very quickly because of other requests that the client has made of us in terms of timing. Okay. Um, Do you have any other questions for us? Um, well, so when I called, or when, when you called me earlier in the week uh, to discuss having me here tonight briefly, mm-hmm. I had spoken with, with Emily before. I had given her an update on some of these things. And my and Emily's assumption is that you would prefer to have her do the review um, of the new things coming in. So um, Emily had been fine with it. 
but I was going to include her on the email when we send out the PDF to you just so that she has it. Um, and the, the thought behind that was that if she is able, um, then it would be great if she could have her proposal in time for the November meeting, um, because then you, you could essentially make two votes during, or I guess three votes during. Uh, so just, just um, for, for clarity's sake, will you have submitted the ANRADs for the two new parcels in time for that meeting to open those hearings in November? Yes. You will, okay. Um, your, your November meeting is uh, on, thanks, my mouse. Well, oh, because I'm in the calendar. Um, it's November twelfth. Right. Um, so that that's actually three weeks from now, and you should have the hard copies. Um, on Monday, um, my intent is to send the PDFs out tomorrow. Um, it's just that everything's gonna end up in the mail tomorrow. So that's. That's what's happening now that we finally have signatures. So we we will have them in time to do that. And we understand that you can't actually do any work or anything before that happens. It was more that just you can open the hearing, you can vote to do the peer review, you can vote to accept the, the proposal if it's ready, um, and then vote to continue. So it, it was more to try to be be a little more streamlined and, and productive. Um, and you know, once once we send documents to you, they're part of the public record. So if Emily wanted a copy, it, all she would have to do is ask, and I could send it to her anyway. Um, right. But if if you had a different peer reviewer in mind, then we wouldn't do that. It's just that we kind of thought, since you had already mentioned them to her, that that was probably your intent. Um, so yeah, we haven't really discussed it, but it probably is our intent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so like, I, I didn't want to step on, on anyone's toes by doing that, but that's kind of what Emily and I thought was going on. Um, so if, if you don't want me to include her, I won't. No, that's fine. Um, um, but I just, I do want to urge you that when you um, once these two new projects arrive, if you can work with our new clerk, Tessa, because I think you know Linda has um, left us and Tessa has joined the crowd here um, just to make sure you get a time on our schedule for that meeting. Right. Right. So I mean, it sounds hi, like- Hi, you're... Tessa, it's good to meet you. <laughs> hi, it's nice to see you. I've put a face, right, to the, yeah. all the email. Um, I mean, it, what I'm hearing is it sounds like there would be three ANRAD related uh, hearings then on the November. Right. There'd be two right. new ones and then the one, is it Pratt West? Uh, Pratt East, I think Pratt is. East. Pratt, right, Pratt West is a December, so Pratt. Right. Yeah. Well, welcome to the club of, of mixing all these things. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm hearing. Right, we, we would hopefully be closing out Pratt East and then opening up the other two. And um, so, you know, I know what we need to anticipate again, because you're gonna be re-noticing these, this to the um, crowd for the, the existing Pratt Corner one, but the two other ones are going to go to a new group of people. And just from experience, we're going to have a lively, um, conversation, even though we won't be doing very much during that meeting, because people always want to know what's up. And, and last time, you, you put a great thing on your website that was really well explained. Uh, yeah, that is because <laughs> so many things were, uh, so much information and misinformation was flying around. So, um, yep. So anyway, um, but still people will will want to weigh in and so Tessa and Maria as you're thinking about scheduling these you need to allow um, at least some amount of time uh, between each of them. Understood. 
Penny, do you think there'll be need for time for Pratt East to close it out, or is it mostly just the two new ones? Um, well, Tulsa, I really don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I this is our first uh, run through the ANRAD process, and I'm. I will say, I'll say this to you too, Maria. I feel like when I was out in the field with you and Emily, it was reassuring to see that you both seem to agree with um, the changes that needed to be made. And um, I, I mean, I, I'm very optimistic that what TRC is, uh, has in its final document is pretty solid information and that Emily will agree with that, but we haven't been through the process before, so. Um. Right, and, and I was actually gonna say to Tessa, I think we should probably schedule um, the same amount of time for Pratt East that we scheduled for the other two because of the re-noticing. Um, usually what happens with ANRADS is that there's a lot of interest at the first meeting, and then everyone finds out that there's actually no project to discuss yet, and they, never come again until an NOI or something gets submitted. Mm -hmm. But because it's being re-noticed, there, there may be a lot of interest. Yep, I agree. Could somebody explain to me what it means to have it re-noticed? So when, when we originally noticed these, there was a typo in the legal ad. It said Tuesday instead of Thursday. The rest of the meeting date was correct. Um, but we all talked to legal counsel and stuff, and everyone just said, you know, the best thing is to next time you have a a real public meeting for these to just put in another legal ad. It's not a, a huge cost, but you know, just so that there's something out there that's correct. Okay, right. so it's public noticing. Right. Yes, and I think it also was that the original wasn't during COVID and so there's some added language about accessing remote hearings, is that true? Um, yes, so you sent me um, an updated a butter, well, you, you sent me both. You sent me an updated legal ad template and um, an updated a butter notice example template um, with some different language because your your meetings are done a little bit differently now. Um, so that's, that's another reason for us to be doing this anyway because these were originally submitted last January. So. Almost a year ago. <laughs> I know, and, and we waited until the spring to be able to do things, so not, not all of it was our fault, but... <laughs> no, 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 but it's just, it's amazing how time flies. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? So as long as, as you're all right with, with that plan, um, I, I don't think that I have any other questions other than I think I heard at the beginning of the meeting that you lost one of your members. So I'm wondering when you talk to Mark Stinson, um, what that does to your quorum to be able to vote on these. Yeah, well, we need to talk to Mark Stinson about that as well. Um, we, we have a quorum right now um, that has been part of this, but I, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm stepping off the commission at some point in the near future and that does certainly complicate things. Um, both Robin and Liam have been part of this from the very beginning, so they're solid on participating, but um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work. Okay, that's, that's fair. If you could just let us know what Mark says, that would be great. Um, I, I think that maybe because these are being re-noticed that there might be a way to basically like close the hearing and then reopen it. Yeah, well, we'll certainly investigate that. That would work on our end. Um, but I, I don't know the nuances of that. So uh, <laughs> whatever well, you learn, I'd love to hear about. Yeah, well, we certainly haven't been through this either. So we'll let you know. Okay, well, good to chat with you. And um, I guess at least we'll be I know, There was a vote for um, not that Maria has to stay, but there was no vote for the last one for the uh, ZQ-6. Okay. It's, we decided on continuing it to the, um, yeah, I think that was to the February 11th, but it wasn't February, voted on. Right. 
Okay, well, I'll move that we um, uh, continue the public hearing for ANRAD at Q6, Q, ZQ-6, Baker, West Pelham to February, was it 11th? Yep. Uh, at 8 p.m. Yes. Yep. Second. I second. Um, all in favor, um, please vote. Uh, Liam Cregan. Aye. Gonna skip over you for the moment, Miriam. Um, Robin Harrington. Aye. And I from me, Penny Jakes. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. Okay. Good Talk night. And soon. Yeah. Nice to meet Bye. you. <laughs> <laughs> but better. <laughs> okay. So we still got some things to do, and we need to issue the um, um, determination of applicability for the Sandhill Road project. And we've got several other topics to discuss. So um, one thing we said at our last meeting was during this month, we would do a CR monitoring visit to the old Orchard Road site. And I did that did not get scheduled, did it? I think with our, our meeting so. yet. Out, that we just sort of uh, dropped that up, that ball. So I will tell you, if you come this weekend, you'll see lots of people doing lots of work in our neighborhood. No, next weekend. It's our work day. <laughs> um, oh, so this is your neighborhood. It's you, my are, neighborhood. you do live on Old Orchard Road, right? Yes, I do. Um, but, you know, at least two people need to go on the site visit and Tessa, I would certainly encourage you to come on the site visit because, uh, uh, in my mind, part of the clerk's role is to sort of manage our, um, conservation restriction business. And I know Linda had, did a good job of putting together a lot of resources for that, but um, it would be a good place for you to start. And, and I know you have an interest in that anyway. I so, would be delighted. Yeah. <laughs> and who is going to be the host? Well, usually I have always come along, but I've come along as, um, as just uh, an interested participant. Usually I ask the president of our homeowners association to join along. Um, and that's often been who it's been, but not always. It depends a little bit on the neighborhood schedule. Um, but it would be good to get this in before it gets nasty out. So, um, you know, I can let you guys talk about um, a potential date and it it used to be that we always did these things on the weekend. Miriam, are you still working? No. Oh, okay. So, but um, many people are retired. I know, Liam, you're not. Um, um, so, and many people in our neighborhood are retired now as well. So that opens up more possibilities for times. I would like to attend. I could probably make a late afternoon time work, although daylight savings is pretty close now, so that's not okay. going to work for much longer. One more How week. long does it take? How much time do we need? Um, well, we have, a, we have a 40 acre pool and many trails, but normally we've uh, walked through the front field and through the other areas in the front of the property and then just done a loop through the woods on one of the trails in the back 20 acres I would say it takes a little over an hour and it's a lovely walk it's worth remembering that we talked about doing it in the spring as well just to change up the season because it mm -hmm. didn't get changed last year um, so if some people 
couldn't go this time, they could go the next. Right, that's true. So I would say that at least two members and Tessa at a time that you guys can um, do it. And if you want to do it, we don't have to sort it out in the context of the meeting, but sometimes that's the best thing just so that it happens. Mm -hmm. Well, if we did it sometime next week during the late afternoon, I could definitely be there. And I guess the weekend, the week after too, although daylight savings is November 1st. So next week. Right. So I think it would really, week. yeah, I think if you're going to do it late afternoon, it really does need to be next week. And I know um, Tessa, <coughs> excuse me, Tessa needs to do a little bit of preparation for this. Um, I, I don't know if you've talked to Tessa with Linda very much about how she goes about this, but um, she, I'm sure, can walk you through what she organizes ahead of time. Okay, yeah, we, it hasn't come up yet, but I can ask her. So maybe later next week? That would be good also, because I'm waiting on that COVID test. <laughs> oh, that's right. Let's hope you don't have COVID. Um, Good night, everybody. I'm going to be careful and leave the machine on so I don't shut down your meeting when I leave. Great. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, night. Good, night. Good night. Are you are you feeling better, Becky? Yes. Good. And have you had your COVID test? Um, I had one, yeah. Okay. For, yeah. Take okay. care. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. So maybe next Thursday or Friday. Yeah, I can't do Friday. I'm I generally um, three afternoons a week. I'm doing childcare with my granddaughter, so I, I'm not working, but I actually am working. <laughs> Is she old enough to come along? No, we would not like that. She's three. <laughs> that would not be a good thing. Gotcha. gotcha. It'd be good for a little while, and then it would be very bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, the 29th. Does that work for you, Miriam? Um, what time are we talking about? Like, we're talking about like four? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I have to be back by 5.15, so. Well, um, we could do it such that you could leave I could bug out. Yeah, you could bug out. We could do um, walk through the woods first and then then do the field part so that you could exit when you needed. Yeah, that sounds good. And I think I'm free. Okay. And I'm free. Does anyone object to dogs coming along? Absolutely no. not. <laughs> He's got a ton of acorns to eat this time. Oh my God, he does. <laughs> okay. Um, so what is the day and time? It's next Thursday. Oh, my computer just froze. October 29th. Okay. Well, I didn't have a calendar, so I didn't know what day of the week the 29th was. So trying to Next do the Thursday math before. in my head. And I'll keep everyone in the loop on when I'm able to get into the town hall because when I'm, I'm assuming the test will come back negative because I think I have a cold, but. Um. Mm. Well, let's hope you feel better. So I will actually pass this along to our homeowners um, organization president. Normally it's done by a, a letter, but we're planning some kind of short notice, so I will um, alert him to this. And do we just park at your house again? Yep, you can just park at my house again, and I'll make sure um, that everyone has the address. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, Uh, okay, so looking at our site visits, 
So for the 453 Pratt Corner Road, it turns out we've already been there before. Um, I think Mr. Uh, Rathbun had had a site visit to do some preliminary work. And now he's put in a building application, a building permit application to construct a dwelling mm -hmm. there, but there are no wetlands um, within jurisdiction. Right. So that BPA can be signed off on. Okay. And then we went to the Hans hmm, Beach Beach, <laughs> which was interesting to find because there was no address. So we walked around until we found it. Um, and then no one was there. So we talked to one of the abutters who said, yep, that's the tree. And it's fine for them to cut the tree. Um, it's within the 50 foot buffer zone, but um, they can get the standard letter um, about giving them permission to cut the tree if they leave the stump in place. Um, but I would recommend that they consider planting some young trees and or shrubs on the site because it's very steep going down to the lake and I think it will um, help stabilize the site and protect it for the long run. I will add that to the letter. Okay, so that's a recommendation, not a requirement. And then for the Brooks 37 Shore Drive, we didn't find anyone home and we couldn't figure out what tree might be the tree in question. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I... Well, that's okay. I mean, I don't know, you know. I'll reach out again. Okay. And at least I guess if the tree is flagged next time, we would have a um, better success. Okay, MAC fall conference fund use. I just um, wanted to let the commission know that I know Miriam sent in her, her invoice and so I have, Miriam, I have that in process. Right. Um, for you to get reimbursed. Um, and I just wanted to let any other commissioners who may have um, attended part of the MACC fall conference that I can, if you send me the invoice, then I can get you reimbursed. I, ma I managed to get it in my head that it was next week, so I didn't go to any of the workshops. I guess there's still time, but I don't think I'm going. So my mental calendar has failed me. <laughs> No, oh, mine failed long ago. <laughs> okay, Commissioner, potential conflict of interest. Miriam, might that be you? That might be me. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to, you know, I've sent a bunch of emails and I just wanted to tie it all together and uh, let the commission know where things stand now and um, what I am proposing to do going forward around this. Um, so just to review the history, uh, in case it wasn't really clear from my emails, uh, back in 2015 and 2016, when the Wheelick Track Solar Project was going through the permitting and public hearing process, um, you know, I voiced some concerns about it, as did some other residents. And as a consequence of that, um, W.D. Coles served a number of people with no trespass orders. Um, forbidding us to go set foot on any Cole's property or Cole's business. Um, oh, you're kidding. You can't even go into... Can't buy my paint there anymore. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's... Well, so, um, and, I, and I wasn't the only one. I'm not the only one, just so you're aware, I'm not the only one involved in town government. Uh, Michael DeCara, who was on the select board at the time and is now a planning board member, was also served with the same notice and there are several other people. So, um, you know, I'm not the only ones who are facing this particular issue with regard to town government. Um, but really out of an abundance of caution, I've uh, talked to a lot of people about it. Um, 
including uh, contacting the state ethics office and speaking with an, an attorney in the state ethics commission and also my own personal attorney. And I reached out to Becky Torres and she consulted with town council um, just to make sure I understood how all things interact. Um, unfortunately, this permit, this trespass order has no end date. So it is still in effect. Um, and up to now I've managed, it's almost four years now I've managed to stay clear of Cole's property, even though they own property across the street from my driveway. <laughs> um, you know, you do what you gotta do. So um, this is kind of what I've been told is that um, this no trespass order does not create a, a true conflict of interest, but more of an appearance of a conflict of interest. So it does not require that I recuse myself from all deliberations before the Conservation Commission. It does mean that I cannot set foot on Cole's property for site visits, um, but that does not prevent me from uh, deliberating or voting on matters. Um, it was recommended that I submit a 23B uh, um, disclosure form um, to address that issue which I did and that can you form, just, can you, I don't know that form. Can you describe it's what a, it? it's a form it's a state form when there's an appearance of a conflict of interest but there is no true conflict of interest according to the definitions the state definitions the statutory definitions of a conflict of interest there's no financial relationship um, so in that, um, in that situation, what a town employee must do is submit this form to their appointing body, which is the select board, and explain what the issue is and why it might appear like a conflict of interest and then basically um, testify or, or attest that I feel confident that I can fulfill my role in an impartial and ethical way. Um, so there's no approval or disapproval involved. It's just a matter of filing it with the select board, which I have done. Is that okay. clear? And do, do they weigh in on it? Or they don't it weigh in on it. They just no. receive it. I see. Okay. So it's a it's a very uh, uh, very perfunctory kind of process. Now, the bigger process is when um, you have a true conflict of interest, and the way the state law is written, if you are an abutter or if you are within 300, you're an abutter of an abutter, but you're within 300 feet of the property line, then you're considered to have a financial interest in a matter. Um, even if you know you actually are not financially, there's no exchange of money going on, just your, your proximity to a project. So for example, with the ANRAD that's near the Wheelock tract, and I'm forgetting whether it's PCR East or West, which one is it? Me too. Okay. Well, the one that's close to my house, <laughs> I am within 300 feet. My, my property boundary is in 300 feet of the Coles property boundary. So in that matter, I, ha I am considered to have a conflict of interest. And but that's um, interesting because uh, I, and that has nothing to do with you being trespassed from the property. No, no, that's it's a totally separate issue. Because I'm, I don't know if I'm within 300 feet, but I'm uh, maybe within 500 feet of the the um, Carver Montague property. But I was told that at least for conservation commission things, as long as I didn't abut, I was not. Well, um, when, what the I, ethics? You might want to check because what I was told, and I was the and I actually. The state ethics attorney emailed me a summary of our conversation. I can forward mm -hmm. it to you. But she quoted the law, which says a conflict of interest is defined. A financial interest is defined as mm -hmm. if you're within 300 feet. Okay. That so might you, may not be, the... you may not be Becky uh, Penny because you're 500 feet. Yeah. And I, I would have to, you know, I've never actually measured it. I've looked at it on a map and tried to guess, but. So this is an issue, you know, with all these projects going on over all over town. I know the planning board had to really look at that when they were looking at the subdivision plans of who had to recuse. Right, right, they and, it's, and it's challenging because the these parcels 
are huge and uh you know many many people's properties could impact to these so I do, I do so what i was gonna what i was just gonna say is and, and this is kind of related to that is that um there is i mean so i am officially recusing myself from any deliberations around the property near my house mm -hmm. whatever that is called i think it's whatever that's called um, I have it. I just don't have it right now on the tip yeah. of my tongue. Um, however, if there was a necessity for me to not be recused, um, there is a process whereby I file a, a, what is called a Section 19 disclosure form to the select board and ask them to authorize me to, be, um, to not recuse. Hmm. So basically disclosing the uh, conflict and then testifying, of course, that I think I can be impartial and maybe laying out a rationale for why I think they need to do that. Um, so if there was a situation that came up where we didn't have a quorum because of recusals, um, in that case, you know, that may be something that the mm -hmm. CONCOM would need to look at if other people were having to recuse themselves. Mm, interesting. I was just going to say the 300 might come from the planning board, zoning board side of things where the butter, I just know that the butter list when it's requested for a special permit has to be within, is 300 feet, not 100. Because it's a, it's not, it's, um, it comes from the state ethics laws. That's what it comes from, I believe. Or at least this piece, I mean, not noticing a butters for a planning board purpose, but maybe maybe because they're defining a financial interest as anybody who's within 300 feet. So um, the one thing, I, so I sort of feel like going forward, you know, it's clear what I'm gonna recuse myself from. Um, I'm gonna be super duper careful not to do anything um, intentionally to trespass. That's not my desire. I don't, no desire to do that. And so certainly we'll be careful um, I have, my attorney said, you know, if you accidentally stumble onto somebody's land and it's not marked, um, you know, it would be pretty hard to prosecute that, is what I've been told. So, because um, for a no trespassing order, it has to be very clearly marked um, the, what the boundary is. So, um, you know, I will... If I am going to do a site visit, I will in advance check out with Tessa to make sure I have the right maps and can look at the plots and see who's around that property um, and, uh, you know, stay clear of the boundaries if it's an issue and try not to trip over it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess one of my concerns is really, you know, I don't want to burden the rest of the commission. So, you know, um, I'm happy to try to do some heavy lifting on other tasks if we think about that, if it feels burdensome to people that I'm not able to go to all the, maybe all of the um, site visits. Yeah, well, I'm, I suspect the commission can work around that. I mean, our, our and I don't think we've ever written this down in, anywhere, but um, in my mind, we should always have a minimum of two members go on every site visit just mm -hmm. so the burden of remembering the burden of what is said uh, all of that stuff doesn't fall on one person's shoulders um so uh it's great when everyone on the commission can go but it often works that one or two people can't make a one or more site visit so anyway um I, appreciate yeah, and I guess I would also say that the only Coles land that I've walked on is for the ANRADs. Yeah. So yeah. In the commission. So it's not very common for Coles to be putting in applications that need site visits. It sounds like down the line, there's going to be the NOIs. The NOIs. But I think we can work around, you know, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a few site visits out of many. It's a few and, and we're going to be having somebody an ex, you know, our wetlands person going out on those anyway, also. So, um, you know, I feel like, you know, I can get enough information without, I don't feel like I have to be at those um, to get, be informed. So anyway, that's it. Always interesting. It's always interesting.
Okay, so I see on our agenda we have um, some site visit follow ups, but I think we actually took care of most of those other ones. I think, yeah, we that did. was because of the missed October 8th, but yeah, yeah. there was follow up um, okay. of getting yeah. the uh, getting that information, um, getting the forms from you guys. Um, so that has yeah. happened. Okay. So have we given you all the forms at this point? Yes. We yeah. have. Well, good for us. <laughs> okay. Um, so then I, unless I'm missing something, our last task for the night is to finish up the orders for the January Hills Road septic system. Yes. I can share my screen. Let me get that up. I'm going to grab something to drink while you get that. Going to flip back to that change in language about the tarp. So I just to throw out an idea here. So on these uh, determinations of applicability, where we cram all this information in this little obscure spot in this form, I honestly sometimes wonder if it would be better to have it on a separate piece of paper that was attached and uh, sort of called out from the form. Yeah, that's fine. I definitely with the last order of conditions because it's included as part of the EDP form, but it's very hard to read. Um, I did print it out separately um, mm -hmm. and submit it. Um, and I'm happy to do the same. Is there a risk that it'll get separated and then the construction people won't see it? Well, I think it can be put here. If it fits, I mean, uh, sometimes they don't fit and we're, we're forced to put it on a separate piece of paper. Um, but uh, I don't think redundancy is such a bad thing. I mean, the, the other thing is if we do leave it in the format like this where it's just sort of buried in the document, I would highlight it with a yellow highlighter or something. So, um, and, and Tessa, you can remind me the cover letter that goes with that, this, does it, um, it does direct people to look at the conditions, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, I think it, it lists what that's on page three. So this is fresh in my mind because I think that the road project on, on Baker Road um, was done without, well, <laughs> without any care to any of this. And maybe I'm wrong, but I just, uh, I saw what looked like a lot of asphalt that had been pulled up from a road at the highway department when I was there maintaining gardens earlier this week. Right. I can check um, that. Well, yeah. you, you can ask Linda. She lives on Baker Road. She would know. Sorry about that. No trouble typing. So just one very minor point as I'm looking at this. When we say depict it on plan, I think it's always good to call out what plan it is. So um, let's see, I have it here. It's um, septic system design plan for Constance uh, hmm, Caplelli, 26 January Hills Road. Septic system design. Yep, plan for Constance. I thought the name was spelled differently. Two P's. Yeah, C A P P E L L I. I think um, it's misspelled on the plan. Oh. There's an extra L and missing an I. 
So is it only one L? I thought it was two L. Uh, well, this is here at C A P P L E L L I. I don't know. There's just an extra L popped in there. Um, yeah, two L's, two P's, two L's. Okay. And the date is 9-11-2020. Um, where was I? Yeah, and it is going off, so I might have to move it to a separate page because it looks like. And it then is. in that case, I would just say, uh, please refer to a document and give that document a name. Yes, we can do that. Um, do people feel comfortable voting, and then I can do that after outside of the meeting? I wouldn't be changing anything. I just would be moving it to a separate. Yeah, it works for me. That's fine. That's me too. Hi. Do people accept me starting to type in names? Yes. 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 Was Miriam part of this? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Miriam yes. is part of this. The first signature, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's so thrilling. Skin. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's set. I will save it right now, and I will move shift everything to a separate page. Okay. So I think we're done for the night. Go watch the debate. Oh gosh. Well, oh, that's perfect, perfect timing. Can I? Right, ruin your night. <laughs> Man, I must get 30 requests a day for um, money for Democratic candidates right now. It's more, it's three quarters of my email. <laughs> well, my fingers so, are crossed. What are we mo moving forward with the order? Are pennies going to? I'm going to um, draft, I'm going to modify things a little bit. Um, I can tell you really quickly, I added in a couple of things. I'll read them to you now. Um, let me just find where they are. Um, Do you want me to share the document? Um, well, I added a couple of things since I sent it to you, and these are, they're they're fairly minor, but you should but perhaps we can agree to these now, and then anything else I will do will really just be um, a, a little bit of rewording based on what we heard tonight. Okay, so I added three conditions, and then we can talk a little bit about the. Thalweg. Um, I added one that said any trees that must be removed for construction will be flagged and reviewed by the commission prior to removal. All other existing trees shall be uh, protected and maintained throughout the duration of construction. If unseen conflicts with an existing tree is encountered, the contractor shall consult with the applicant and the commission prior to its removal. And then I added, uh, and this actually came from a detail on the plan that um, the, uh, the engineers had 
put in there. So, so I just thought it was good to uh, reinforce that. And this next one uh, is was also mentioned. It says removal of ex existing stone retaining walls shall be performed by hand to limit impacts on the resource area. Um, these stones will be stockpiled. And this, I added this next sentence. Um, these stones will be stockpiled for reuse in stream bed or scour blanket. And then I added, and this might be modified a little bit based on what we talked about with Matt. Um, it says substrate from existing stream channel will be harvested and stockpile for use in culvert channel and down, downstream scour blanket. Comments, concerns? I'm, yeah, okay. Do we want to leave it open if there might be a, a construction issue with doing that? Or or should it just be? Important? Well, I don't think there's an, I think, um, I think the issue that we might have is specifying the source of the stones. I mean, frankly, I would like to, I would prefer, and maybe we could put something in there that said, um, that expressed a preference for this, that the, the stones used, well, you know, they're embedding the culvert, the box culvert, and they'll put some, um, um, soil in there, but then they'll also put, um, a bunch of rocks that will create the foul wag in a, in a natural stream like, uh, basin. And I would certainly prefer, especially that those stones be native uh, river stone, but it sounds like uh, conditioning it that strictly may be a problem. Any suggestions on how we could uh, try to achieve that? Uh, sourcing native stream bed material. Yeah. Mm. We. It's hard to say. I mean, we could say that the contractor should prioritize reusing um, any excavated stream bed material within the culvert, maybe something like that, mm -hmm. um, which wouldn't really be a mandate or a command, but it would kind of indicate our preference. And it sounds like, based on what Matt says, there is going to be some excavation of stream bed material. Mm -hmm. So that's in the order and they were already thinking about reusing it, then they'll, they'll know for sure they should. Oh, yeah. I just hate to see all that big blocky riprack, riprack in the, the we, can we stream. Can we say no riprack <laughs> in the <laughs> steam bed, stream bed? Yeah. I mean, it's... I, I don't think that's a good idea because it sounds like the riprap is really a, an effective control of stream bank erosion. And that, right. that's why they want to put it in. Right, it's going to be well, coming right out the outlet. It is, but in reading um, and reviewing a bunch of documents, it seems like it's preferable to have more natural mixed sized stone for these kinds of things. I, I think the real dilemma is expense, as Becky started to allude to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, I think it seemed like it was a possibility to have it match more closely with what was um, already what they found when they did the sieve percolation tests. Um, I don't know. Yeah, definitely, I've seen some stuff that is way bigger than what we saw when we were out there, like at at different culverts. Yeah. Um, I definitely know also that if they're, I think having. Uh, the armoring afterward will trap sediment and will help hopefully build up where that scour because it's not great to have a scour. Right. Well, the, the scour is a pre-existing scour. Um, right. Because of the channeling. Yeah. Right. Um, so it should. Yeah. The idea would be. The the pipe is it, you? Yeah. You saw that big scour basin, which yeah. I'm sure is because it's uh, an undersized culvert. Right. So. 
Okay, well, let me ponder and do a little more research to see if I can come up. Maybe I'll email Scott Jackson at UMass and ask him if he has uh, any thoughts about that. I mean, we could look up what the uh, DOT requirements studies? are because yeah. they were referring to that. You want to give that a shot? Sure. I don't, yeah, I've never seen any of those details. So I, um, you would find it as easily as I would. <laughs> I will ask my daughter who is a geotechnical engineer. Well, that's <laughs> she will know that. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I just put a little uh, note in here that said uh, work on the stone condition. <laughs> okay. And uh, okay. I'll, I'll follow up and get you that information in the next couple of days, Penny. Okay, great. Just Anyone here. else have anything? I think we answered most of the questions. I was reassured to hear that uh, a giant excavator can reach down from above <laughs> to do the excavation rather than driving around in the wetland. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I will, um, I'll work on this. I probably won't do it tomorrow. Um, I have a busy next couple of days, but I'll do it at least by the beginning of next week and send it back out to people again. And if you feel, do we want to take a vote? Do we want to say if it's not substantially changed from what we talked about right now that um, we can issue the order? What do you think? Sure. Sure. So that would mean that we would vote now to uh, accept this as only very minorly amended based on what Miriam finds out and um, and anything I can find out about stones for the riprap and for the stream bed. So can I have a motion? Are we all too tired to motion? <laughs> oh. Okay, I'll make a motion that we um, accept the order of conditions as presented in the draft, except for very minor changes um, in wording and um, that no new conditions will be added. Um, and then issue the order once these details are sorted out. I second. second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Oh. Aye. And Miriam, you don't get to vote on this I one. Get to vote. Sorry, you get to help with it, but um, yeah, we opened the hearing before you joined. So, um, Liam? Aye. Robin? Aye. And Penny, I. Oh, so I should um, type your names in, in front of you. Yes, you should do that just to be. <laughs> yeah, one second while I get that open. Oh, and I guess the one other thing I need to fuss with a little bit is the condition that um, Matt and talked about where relating to um, changes in the plan. So I'll try to draft something that states more or less what he said, which is essentially uh, the commission will have a chance to review the final stamped plans approved by Mass DOT and can weigh in if there are any significant changes that um, affect the interests of the commission. And if anyone has any great wording for that, send it to me. <laughs> no, I took notes, but it was almost verbatim of what Matt said. Yeah, I did too. And he was kind of uh, jumbling around a little bit. So, well, if you come up with anything coherent, send it my way. 
Okay. All right, so. Okay. Okay. Well, that was a productive meeting. Ooh. I'm <laughs> tired. All right. I'm signing off. Good night, guys. Hey. Good night, yeah. Miriam. Bye. Good night. Do you need to make a motion to close right. that we adjourn? I I move that we adjourn this meeting at 9:16 p.m. I second. 30. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <laughs> well done, everyone. Thanks, you too. <laughs> okay, and so Tessa, you'll send a message out to us early next week just to confirm the site visit. I mean, the CR monitoring visit. Sure. Yes. Yes. Because I hopefully I'm hoping that I will get my results back. Um, but in any case, I can start talking to Linda about okay. what is. And I will talk to my neighbor Cliff about um, hosting the visit. Okay. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Everybody. Good night.